everyone. Welcome to the Dog Mom Knits YouTube channel. This is part six of how to knit a dishcloth. So parts one through five taught you how to cast on, how to make the knit stitch, how to read and knit a pattern, and then we worked through the garter stitch dishcloth pattern that I have linked down below. It's right there, three very simple steps. And you have a completed, finished object, a garter stitch dishcloth. But if you want to challenge yourself and go just a little bit further with your knitting and learn some new skills, that's where variation number one and variation number two come in that are included in the pattern that is linked down below. This video is going to focus on variation number one. So as I discussed in how to read and knit a pattern, the first thing you want to do when you have a new pattern is read through it in its entirety. Make sure you understand what the pattern designer is asking you to do using the stitch glossary or the key that is provided in the pattern. So for variation number one, I see that it's called the stockinette stitch dishcloth. So I know that it's different from the previous dishcloth that I knit because this one is called garter stitch. So it says CO 40 stitches. So I'm going to go back to my stitch glossary and I see that CO means cast on. No problem. I know how to do that. I mastered that in my garter stitch dishcloth. So then it says knit using the pattern below. Rows one through 10, knit all stitches. No problem. I can do that. I did that with my garter stitch dishcloth. Row 11 and all odd rows, K all stitches. So I'm gonna go back to my pattern. K means knit. Or excuse me, I'm gonna go back to my stitch glossary. K means knit. No worries. I can knit. That's not a problem. Row 12 and all even rows, K10, so knit 10, P20. Okay, so let's go back to our stitch glossary. P means to purl. I haven't taught you guys how to do that yet. Let's go emphasis on yet. That's the point of this video. So we're going to K10, P20, K10. This combination of knitting all of the stitches on one row and purling some of the stitches on the other row, on the next row, is what gives us stockinette stitch. And I will show you that in just a minute. And then rows 51 to 60, we are going to knit all stitches. And then our last step says BO40 stitches. And if I look at my stitch glossary, that says bind off. And I already know how to do that. So the only thing you don't know how to do for the stockinette stitch dishcloth is the purl stitch. So I'm going to show you that in this video so that you can make a variation of the dishcloth that you have already made. So again, this is the first dishcloth I made. It is made out of Knit Picks Dishy Multi in the colorway Pebble. This is garter stitch. This is knit every stitch on every row, and this is the texture that you get with garter stitch. Variation number one is stockinette stitch. So it starts with 10 rounds of garter stitch. So you can see that this is the same texture as what I was just getting in my original dishcloth. But now I've got this a garter stitch border, and then a stockinette middle. So this is garter stitch, knit every stitch on every row. This is stockinette stitch, which is knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row. That's it, easy peasy. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to knit the stockinette stitch dishcloth, which is variation number one in the pattern that I have um, linked down below. 
So the first step of the pattern says to cast on 40 stitches. I've already done that. It is the exact same cast on that you used for the previous dishcloth. Nothing has changed. And then it says knit using the pattern below. Rows 1 through 10. And I do have a row counter. Um, you can use a pen and do tally marks on a piece of paper or scrap paper or the pattern or whatever. I like these little reusable stitch markers because this one especially just kind of hangs out on my knitting. Makes my life easy. So it says knit, excuse me, rows 1 through 10, knit all stitches. And so I used my row counter and I knit all of my stitches. No big deal. Then it says rows 11 through 50. Row 11 and all odd rows knit all stitches. So every time I work an odd row on my counter, I'm just knitting all the way across. No big deal. When I turn my work to knit an even row, it says rows 12, row 12 and all even rows, knit 10, purl 20, and then knit 10. So I put these little stitch markers, you do not have to do this if you don't want to, um, I don't like counting every other row, um, so I put these stitch markers in. I will have these linked down below. You can also use safety pins, paper clips, whatever you want. Whatever you have sitting around that makes a loop, you just hook it on to your project as you're knitting, and I'll show you that when I get to it, and that just means I don't have to count. 20 stitches across to know when I'm supposed to switch from knitting to purling. So I am on, I just finished row 21. So I am on an even row. I am going to set myself up like I always do. So let me just say real quick, I am using different needles for this tutorial, um, this part of the tutorial. These are what are called circular needles. So it has a needle and it's connected by a cord with the other needle. These are used for knitting anything that you want to knit in a circle. So a sock, a hat, a sweater, I actually prefer using circular needles for even just straight projects because it means I don't lose my second needle. But what I am doing here is the same exact motion, whether your needles are connected or they're separate. So please don't let that, please don't let that confuse you. So I'm on an even row. I'm getting back to my start position as I always do. Right here, left hand needle facing, the needle in my left hand, the point is facing to the right, and it has all of my stitches. The needle in my right hand is facing to the left, and it has none of the stitches because this is my working needle. So the row says knit 10. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. And because I have put the stitch marker in, I don't have to count that every round, or excuse me, every row, because I just am going to knit until I get to my stitch marker. So I'm at my stitch marker. I know that it's time to start purling. So I'm just going to slip that stitch marker over. And the purl stitch is essentially the knit stitch backwards. So instead of going into the front of my stitch and working the yarn, I'm going to bring the yarn around to the back. So I'll show that again. Knitting, your yarn is in the back. Purling, your yarn is in the front. So my yarn is now back here with me. 
And I'm going to, it's the same motion, just backwards. So I'm going to take my needle in front of the other needle. I'm going to insert it into the stitch in front of the needle it's currently on. I'm going to wrap the front needle, wrap the working needle, take it through and to the back, and then I'm gonna take it off. So again, to purl, your yarn is in the front. You insert the needle, the working needle in front of the needle the stitch is on, so it is in front of it, not behind it. You wrap the yarn around your working needle, which is in the front. So there's that purple strand, that's my current stitch. And you push and out to the back and then off. And then you put it in through the front, wrap it around, and I'll see if I can twist it this way so you can see what that looks like from back here. And you go like that. So here's another angle in through the front, wrap that yarn around the working needle, bring that working needle through the stitch up the back and off. So there are a couple poems for the purl stitch. Um, I thought they were fun, so I'll go ahead and share those with you now. If I can find them in my notes, there they are. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so here's the here's the first one. Under the fence, catch the sheep. Back we come. Sorry, back we come, and off we leap. Under the fence, catch the sheep. Back we come and off we leap. Okay, so here's another one. In front of the fence, catch the goat. Back we go, jump off the boat. In front of the fence, catch the goat. Back we go, off the boat. And then there's one more poem. Jack goes in, puts on his scarf, comes back out, and takes it off. Jack goes in, puts on his scarf, comes back out, and takes it off. In, around, through, off. Same four motions as the knit stitch. You're just working in the front instead of in the back. And the pattern says to do this 20 times across this middle section of the stockinette stitch dishcloth. And because I have added my stitch marker, I don't have to count. <laughs> I'm just going to keep purling. Oops. I'm just going to keep purling across until I get to my next, next stitch marker. So I have two more. Under the fence, catch the sheep, back we come, and off we leap. Jack goes in, puts on his scarf, comes back out, and takes it off. So I have finished the 20 stitches that I needed to purl. So I'm going to take my yarn back to the back of my work. So it's in the front, which means I'm purling, but I need to go to the back. So I'm gonna take it in between the two needles and to the back. Typically what I'll do is separate my needles like this. So I have my yarn in the front and I'm just gonna circle it to the back. I am going to slip my marker because I put a marker there so that I don't have to count. And then my pattern says knit 10. So
so I'm just going to do what I've always done. Um, what I know to do, easy peasy, and I'm just going to knit 10, which is going to take me to the end of my row. And I don't think I mentioned it for this variation, number one, stockinette stitch dishcloth. I am using di Knit Picks Dishy Multi in the colorway Summer Jams. So that's it. The pattern says I'm, so I'm going to click my stitch, or excuse me, my row counter over. I'm now on an odd row, so I just have to knit all the way across. And then I'll do an even row, an odd row, until I hit 60 stitches. Is that right? 60 rows, excuse me. Let me just double check and make sure I'm right. Um, or excuse me, until I hit row 50. And then when the row counter shows me that I'm at row 50, I'll knit 10 rounds. And then I'll bind off and I'll have another dishcloth. So that is variation number one, the stockinette stitch dishcloth. Please, please, please try this out. After you've practiced your garter stitch dishcloth a few times, I think you'll enjoy challenging yourself. And the pearl stitch is not that different. Again, it's just knitting backwards, knitting in the front instead of in the back. I hope this tutorial helps you and challenges you to try something new with your knitting. Happy knitting!